Hi, it's Zeke with the Eastside Church of Christ in Baytown, Texas, with another summary video for our Eastside Bible reading for the week of November 8th through the 14th. We continue reading this week in the book of Ezekiel. In Ezekiel 31 through 32, God continues his warning and condemnation to Egypt. And it's dated, apparently, to 585 B.C. from the dating in uh, chapter 32, verse 1 and verse 17. And God paints a very unflattering future for Egypt and says that the nation is eventually going to be like a dead man, lying down among other dead men or other dead nations. Chapter 33 has Ezekiel being recommissioned as a watchman, just as he was way back in chapter 3. Now that Jerusalem had been taken... That's what it says in chapter 33, verse 21. Just as the prophet warned, now he would have new responsibilities. And those new responsibilities take shape in the preceding chapters where his tone changes from one of condemnation to one of hope and restoration. While he speaks against Israel's enemies who gloated over her downfall, he looks forward to times of blessing and reunion for the nation. Chapters 37, 38, and 39 have been a playground for premillennialists who see some kind of modern-day fulfillment in the visions that Ezekiel has. The trouble is, we know far too little about the, the nations that are named for us to say for certain what the application of the prophecy is, but we shouldn't let, that, let us miss the big picture. The big picture is this, God fights for his people. And that would have been a very reassuring message to Israel, especially in her downtrodden state. Moving on to chapter 40 of Ezekiel, it's dated by verse 1 to 573 B.C. And it begins a section that describes a stunningly magnificent temple. Though, again, premillennialists see this as a vision to be fulfilled at some time when they say that Christ returns to earth to reign here in Jerusalem, it's important to note the context of the vision. Israel was a defeated people, uprooted in disarray. Jerusalem had been destroyed and the temple reduced to rubble. The message of the vision gives hope to a people who dearly needed it. As we move over into our New Testament reading in John chapter 11, John's Gospel presents to us the fascinating account of Jesus raising his friend Lazarus from the dead, which illustrates his claim in chapter 11 verse 25 to be the resurrection and the life. Chapter 12 has Jesus entering Jerusalem for what will be a very active week for him. And of course, it, it culminates in his crucifixion, which makes it all the more sobering, considering that in chapter 25, Jesus says that he knows he's coming to this hour. He was born to come to this hour. Jesus knows what's going to happen. Gathered with his disciples for their last Passover together, Jesus institutes his own memorial. And he shows his disciples the meaning of true servanthood by washing their feet. And he begins the longest unbroken discourse spoken by the Lord in all the Gospels. He speaks of living forever with God. He speaks of the role of the Spirit in his absence. He speaks of the disciples' relationship to him, to each other, and to the world. Jesus is preparing his disciples for his imminent departure. There's a lot to read this week in our Eastside Bible reading. I hope you'll get the chance to take some time to read it, to think about it, to praise God for the preservation of His revelation. We'll see you next time. God bless you.